This set of pygmy uh, style uh, festoon lights is a real blast in the past. It's a really early LED set. And I remember when they first appeared, uh, I thought, oh, that's amazing. And th they look great and they're LED, super low energy. And there is a visible flicker. You guys can see the flicker. Even, you know, the iPad would just be having hysterics over that. This I'm using the Motorola Moto G phone at the moment just because it's uh, got a fairly good camera. And even it's struggling with this flickering because it's so obvious. And I can see them shimmering to the naked eye. It's, if you look directly at them, it's not so bad. Out the peripheral vision, it's pretty horrible. And the reason for that is they're uh, being strobed half wave, unfortunately, with a half assed attempt of the capacitor to actually try and smooth that. However, these were uh, being sold at quite a, a low price for what they were. It seemed too good to be true. And it was, because every so often you turn them on, I'm, I'm looking and I'm seeing the little dents in here. Is that I think that's where the plastic's been touching the rubber cable and it's kind of melted its way in a wee bit, because th these have been sitting around for years, a long, long time, possibly over 10 years, it's, you know, at least 10 years. And when I got these home, I turned them on, thought, oh, I thought they were great, and then I turned them off, and then I turned them on again, and one of the lamps was out. And you can take these lamps out, and you can change them. Now, I can't remember if they gave you a spare one, but you can change them, and they're in series, and uh, when you put a new lamp in, or did they supply them with spare lamps? You know, I don't think they did, and that's why one of them suddenly ended up red, because it turns out you can open these and repair them, which is just as well, because for some reason, every so often, one will just conk, and the whole thing will just go out, and that's odd, because I'll show you the circuitry. In fact, I'm going to get these out of shot, because it's actually quite irritating, all that flicker. So the circuitry in them, uh, I'll show you the inside one of the lamps, the cover is plastic and it just sits onto a standard uh, small Edison screw type base. And there's a little circuit board inside with three LEDs, a resistor, a diode and a capacitor. Now I'll just draw the schematic of this out. So there's the tip of the lamp. Here's the thread. And there is a diode, uh, then a smoothing capacitor, and there's 20 lamps in this, so it's about 12 volts across the uh, circuit. Uh, then there's a resistor and the LEDs. It's very, very simple. But the fact it's just using a single diode means, unfortunately, that it is... Uh, it's, you know, I think they've just done it to try and use existing sort of series connected festoon. So uh, let's uh, draw the LED bits in. I'll draw, yeah, yeah, I know. It, I'd never really, I ne never really draw that too well, do I? So that's 100 ohm. Uh, it's 16 volt, 22 microfarad capacitor, and I'm guessing I, I didn't actually check because it's kind of buried down. It's not actually buried down, but I'll guess that's a 1N4007 because that, that kind of fits if it's a, a main set. And what actually happens is that on the active half wave, all these circuits are connected in the series. And that's where I think uh, part of the problem is because initially when you turn it on and the lamps always feel it when initially when they're turned on, I get the feeling that if there was anything like these capacitors at a little dry solder joint, which I don't think they do, or maybe they're such a tiny capacitor, maybe they're just uh, struggling internally uh, with a bad connection onto foil or something. I get the feeling that maybe it was a fault in, fault in the capacitor. or I really don't know. Um, but I got the feeling that initially this current surged through the whole set because all those little capacitors charge up immediately. If this capacitor was open, then that current would want to go through the LEDs instead, and that might pop them. And yeah, I'm not, I, I'm never really, I'll have to wait for one to fail and then analyze it and see if it's actually blowing the LED completely, because normally I'd expect these LEDs to go kind of short circuit when, unless they've they've had, when they, when they go faulty, unless they've had a sort of serious current incident. But yeah, it seems quite strange. However, the good news is they're very easy to open and it's very easy to change the LEDs. It's just three LEDs in series and you can put your own new ones in. That's obviously what I've done with the red one. In fact, you know what? Let's unscrew the red one and bring it up and take a look inside and see what I did to it. 
Yeah, I just use standard, three standard focused lens uh, red LEDs in that. So it's nice. It's nice that you can just open it and do that. I have to remember now that the way they've got this constructed, they've got the this wire at the back, which is the diode lead, it's soldered in through the circuit board, but then it continues down and it's the bit that pokes through the uh, the tip of the lamp for the soldering and basically holds the circuit board in, in that way. Um, the I'm wondering also now. No, because that that connection. Would it be defeating the diode if that touched the side of the case? Maybe that was the the situation. It was touching the case. No, that would just short out the diode completely if it did that, and that wouldn't have an effect because there's all the other LED lamps in the series. And that's a bit odd. Uh, however, um, there's a the lead that comes off the circuit board, it's a capacitor this time, is just soldered through and folded up and it gets pinched um, by the cover going on and just pinching that lead against the side of the um, housing to actually make the connection. So it has to, you have to, when you put this together, you have to make sure you nip that wire um, against the case. Um, yeah, it's nice that they're serviceable. They're nice enough lights, but the way I'd improve them greatly, I'm also seeing there, you know, there is a little bayonet cap recess in this. I wonder if these are designed to bayonet cap together. Odd. Uh, there's a little groove, bayonet cap type groove in this. However, uh, the way I'd improve it uh, is I'd get one of those little Chinese LED driver power supplies, the ones that are basically a capacitive dropper, and this whole string I'd just feed it with uh, current limited DC. I'd have, well let's just draw it, I'd have the usual capacitive dropper circuit with the little discharge resistor. See how fast I can draw these now. Uh, going through every direct fire with a inrush limiting resistor, uh, smoothing capacitor, and the output of that I would then use to drive this whole string. And that means that uh, this capacitor here would limit the total current the string could draw. Although it would still, the resistors would still be active. Um, it would, uh, I mean, you couldn't just rectify it and smooth it uh, because that would then give these twice the current would flow through these effectively. Um, because they're designed, the resistor's been chosen for half-wave operation. But um, that would then limit the current and it would provide it smooth DC and then they wouldn't flicker. So maybe I'll do that. So uh, I'm going to have a play around with these and just see what I can do.